Hey there, and welcome to RAM's basic tutorial series. If you need more information about RAM, you can book a demo with our team using the link in the description. You can also create a free RAM account and use the templates below to draw along with me as we go through this tutorial. Let's dive in. So this tutorial is going to be all about how to add metadata properties onto elements in your drawing in order to create comprehensive tables and schedules. So namely, just for an example, you can add properties like price, brand, or material onto furniture blocks, onto surfaces or walls, and then list them with just a few clicks within schedules. We're going to dive into how to do so. And for that, I have this model prepared where I have some spec sheets and this floor plan. So the first thing I want to walk you through is where and how to access and create metadata properties. When you select, for example, a block or a surface, you're going to find the metadata on the bottom right panel. Some of RAM blocks already have some default metadata properties, some don't. In this case, this beach share doesn't. It has only the view property. And if I want to add or manage my properties, I can do that from, from both these panels. I can add a property and create new properties on the right. So for example, we may want to add the brand and the price of this beach chair. And I can also create new properties. So maybe another property we want to create is the status. Uh, was this delivered yet or not? So I'm going to write here. Um, and this is going to be a uh, text property. You can also select number, length, area, uh, and more. And let's accept this. So from now on, this block chart will have all these properties uh, right here, and we can um, fill this input. For the brand, maybe we'll write IKEA. For this data, so we can do delivered. And note that you can also manage all the properties of your project from the Quadro uh, button. So if you click on this, you're going to find all the properties that exist not only in this specific instance, but um, overall, and delete them or leave them. Uh, for example, in this case, I see we have a double property. Let's get rid of one. Um, and you can also create new ones from here as well. So now that we added some metadata properties onto this block, we can see them here. And basically, we're ready to go to our table and manage this information. But before I do that, I also want to just make it clear that you can add this information to other uh, elements, like this surface, for example, contains some metadata properties and more. And there's another way to manage this data in a very streamlined um, way. So what you can do is add metadata onto the parent or the higher level of the component you're using. For example, for blocks, this is going to mean block definition. So for example, if I added information onto this block, that's great. But I ideally, maybe want it to already exist on the other blocks from the same type as well, right? So instead of copying or adding the information twice, what I can do is find the block definition of this chair, add the information in the library, and then each time I drag and drop this block, it's going to contain the information already on the get-go. Let's do an example. I'll select the block panel. I'll write the name of this block, which is patio chase. Okay, patio. There it is. I see I have uh, two types. This one, I think it is this one. All right, I've selected the definition and now I see that it doesn't have any properties on it yet. I'll go ahead and add the properties and we can do the price and brand and add right here the definition. So the brand we said is Ikea. The price we said, what did we say? I think it was 400 euro or something like that. Um, the point is each time I drop this block right now and I can copy it and populate my um, drawing with it, all of the instances uh, will have the uh, information tied onto them, as you can see here. You can, of course, override a specific instance's information. All you have to do is change the information right here to override it. This can also be applied to styles and to other elements in your drawing. So keep that in consideration. Now let's go ahead and use this information in our table tool. I'll go to the table panel right here. And actually, you know what? I want to hide the furniture layer before we start our table. What I'm going to create with you now is spec sheet or takeoff report. Uh, other people call it in different names. The point is that we're going to list all the different materials that we have in this project, the quantities, the pricing, and the information. So now I'll go ahead to the table tool 
And I already have the end game table. I want to give you a sneak peek at that and then we'll see how I built that together. This table contains uh, the type of data uh, as follows. We have here um, the name of the surface or the room. We have the area, scrimmeter count, brand, material, lead time, uh, price uh, per square meter. And we can range this uh, information so we can group it according to uh, brand, for example. And it's going to be really handy for procurement. We can export this to an Excel sheet and work with it outside of RAN as well with other um, project managers or stakeholders. So how did I get to this point that I have this table? Let's create a new table um, to see how this is indicated. So I'll click on the plus button and this is a new table that on the get go simply lists all the elements on my canvas. So different things where we can see here, if we click on the three dots and access categories, we'll see that it has all this information in the table. And what I want to do is filter out only the zones uh, for this tables. So instead of, for example, the blocks, which we could use for creating an FF and E table, we're going to leave the zone on, which is essentially the surface in each room with its square meter count. Just a small reminder for um, those of you maybe coming uh, new in Rayon um, or for everyone, the zone tool is right here. And once you place it within a wall enclosure, it generates a surface like this one with a default area property and square meter tag. So already these zones have information about what's their square meter count. And what we have here is a list of all my zones, which I've renamed. We can also add right now uh, uh, area property. There you go. So this is a nice start. And now I want to build up more and more information onto this. What I've done in advance was select every surface in this floor plan and add metadata onto it like we just did together. So each type of material in this floor plan already has a brand, material, price, and lead time. So that's how I can actually get to the point where I have that kind of table. If I add this information, brand, lead time, material, it's going to aggregate in this table. Let's add another surface onto my drawing and see how we can add it to this table together. So I'll exit this for now and let's add another zone in this drawing. So just for the hell of it, we can add quickly another room. You need to use the wall, uh, RAN wall enclosure in order to uh, add a zone with one click. You also have an option to draw a zone and to learn more about that. Maybe you can visit our tutorial on that uh, topic. But for now, I'm just really quickly uh, placing this other room, selecting the zone tool and clicking within this wall enclosure. So you see that I already have a surface with a square meter tag um, and a default name called zone 14. I'll change uh, maybe just this hatch to some solid color just for now. Uh, and yeah, that's fine for now. The next thing I want to do is name this zone. So I'll go ahead to its name up here. Let's call it extra room which will automatically change its name right here as well. And we'll see now that there's no properties on it added to this extra room. So again, we'll just go to the add property, select material, lead time, price, um, and brand. And now we can input the information here. Let's just do generic, let's do concrete. This can be 20 euros per square meter. And for lead time, I'm going to have a drop down with some options that I used for other uh, materials. So let's choose one of these. Uh, even with the style, we can click on the pick style and match the styles here to match. We can even match the square meter tag. All right. So now that I've added all this information into my extra room, I'm just going to find it here in the table. So there it is extra room its square meter count, its information. And by the way, if I move this uh, wall enclosure in my model, it's gonna update live in my table. So it's really nice because everything is always kept up to date. So the next thing I can do is start grouping. Let's maybe group by, um, by brand. And here's how I can see what I need to shop at a generic store, um, Outdoor Depot, Woodland. I have all the specs for my different tiles and materials here. And I can export my sheet into an Excel sheet 
and then use it, as I mentioned, with outside of RAM. And I can also bring it back into RAM to then create an if if any schedule on my um, model, which will look something like this and carry the information that I have in my table. So that's basically it, guys. That's how you can streamline your work and create comprehensive tables and spec sheets in the same place where you draw your technical drawings. This is really powerful because it kind of streamlines your uh, process, right? If you make any change in your architectural drawing, it will appear right away in your table. And yeah, we hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you have any more questions, you're welcome to book a demo with our team by using the link in the description. You can also join our community and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Have a good one.